Hi everyone, I'm Jetpack. Welcome to my first comic book one-shot video. Normally in these one-shot videos, we are going to take a look at a specific comic book series, get to know the characters, the history, just the basics of the series so that it equips you uh, to go read the comics or go watch a movie and kind of know what you're getting into. This one-shot may be a little different just because I am tailoring it to the release of an upcoming comic book movie that a lot of people don't really know much about. I'm talking about Marvel's next movie that comes out August 1st, Guardians of the Galaxy. When people think of comic book heroes, the list usually consists of Spider-Man, Batman, maybe even Wolverine. Ask the same question to an avid comic book reader and you'll probably get some pretty obscure heroes. Uh, however, I would bet to say that you probably would not hear the names Star-Lord, Gamora, Drax the Destroyer, Rocket Raccoon, or even Groot. So when Marvel announced their upcoming movie, Guardians of the Galaxy, you can imagine that a lot of people were surprised. These characters are not well known. I'm relatively new to the comic book community, and I probably wouldn't have been able to identify them when these people were first announced. Of course, I wikipedia them and started reading up all about them, but luckily they started releasing a new volume of comics uh, under Guardians of the Galaxy, and so I started picking those up, and I love it, and I am super looking forward to this movie. And so, we are going to take a look at the team and some of the other characters that are gonna show up in the movie. The Guardians of the Galaxy are a peacekeeping team whose purpose is to protect the universe from any evil forces who would like to harm it. They're kind of like the Avengers, but in space. Unlike the Avengers team from the Marvel Movieverse, which is predominantly made up of beloved superheroes, the Guardians are all interstellar criminals who have for the most part left their criminal past behind. The team roster has actually changed a lot since its inception in 1969. But today we're going to take a look at the current comic book team, which is the one featured in the movie. Now, because we don't know the full plot summary of the movie, and clearly I haven't seen it yet, uh, I'm just basing this from what we know of the comics, and so this might lead to some unintentional spoilers. So if you are looking to be completely surprised, then I would say just pause this video. Don't close it, just, just pause it. and wait till you see it and then hit play again and then be like oh yeah this this makes more sense or that's interesting i didn't that wasn't in the movie because i'm sure there will be a lot of that the front runner of the guardians is peter quill aka star lord peter is half human half spartax uh, which is an alien race that happens to look a lot like humans peter is technically an orphan however his father jason is actually the king of the spartoi empire which makes Peter, a part of the royal bloodline. Peter is a thief, having even stolen ships and priceless artifacts from all over the galaxy. Because he is half Spartax, his physical capabilities are at peak human potential. This pretty much just makes him harder, better, faster, stronger than the average human. He's an expert in hand-to-hand -hand combat, a master strategist, a spaceship pilot, and an excellent marksman. One of the last mementos that Peter has to remember Earth by is his Walkman, which he's really protective over. This explains the unique music choices for a sci-fi movie like Hooked on a Feeling that's in the trailers, as well as the other classics that we'll surely hear in the movie. Peter's equipped with a few different gadgets, including which is his element gun, which allows him to generate and manipulate the four elements, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Water. Peter Quill, a.k.a. Star-Lord, will be played by Chris Pratt, who's known for NBC's Parks and Recreation, The Lego Movie, and more. Next is the lady of the team, Gamora. Gamora is an assassin raised and trained by her foster father, the Mad Titan Thanos. She is also the sole survivor of an alien humanoid race, the Zen Huberi, uh, which ex explains her green skin. If you recall, Thanos was actually featured at the end of the Avengers movie. Played by Josh Brolin, Thanos is slated to make an appearance in this year's Guardians movie, next year's Avengers Age of Ultron, and then be the main villain in the third Avengers movie whenever that comes out. In the comics, Gamora remained on her father's side until she uncovered his plan to destroy the universe. Gamora was given enhancements by Thanos, which enhanced her speed, strength, agility, durability, and healing factor. 
She is also a highly skilled martial artist and an expert in both gun and bladed weapons, which explains how she received her title as the most dangerous woman in the universe. Given her past, Gamora is not the warmest guardian on the team. However, she is definitely wanting to fight for good and is definitely proving herself despite her ties with Thanos. In the movie, Gamora will be played by Zoe Saldana, who is known for her roles in Avatar as well as the Star Trek movies. Next up is Drax. Drax is a bit of a different character and I'm unsure as to how they're going to be portraying him in the movie. According to the comics, Drax is originally Arthur Douglas, a Las Vegas real estate agent with a wife and kid who were murdered by Thanos when he was on a surveillance mission to Earth. Realizing that Thanos needed to be stopped, Thanos' father, Mentor, decided to create a being whose sole purpose was to destroy Thanos. So he resurrected Arthur's soul, erased his memory, and replaced it with the sole desire to kill Thanos, which is how Drax gets his name, Drax the Destroyer. Drax has superhuman strength, stamina, and resistance to physical injury. He usually fights with knives, however, is also a great martial artist. Now, a few weeks ago, I got to go watch a 17-minute preview of Guardians of the Galaxy, and it was awesome. It is pretty clear, though, that they have changed a bunch of Drax's backstory. For example, he's no longer from Earth. Um, his family was killed, though, and he is now on a path of rampage and vengeance. Personality-wise, one thing that's easy to pick up from the extended trailer is the fact that he takes everything very literally and does not quite get sarcasm or metaphors. Drax the Destroyer will be played by Dave Bautista, who is known for his career in professional wrestling. Next up is the oh-so-furry and oh-so-murderous Rocket Raccoon. He is easily one of the most iconic characters from Guardians of the Galaxy. Though he has the appearance of an Earth Raccoon, Rocket is actually an alien half-worlder and genetic experiment. Rocket is a bit of a wild card, known for his feistiness and inclination to solve problems with bullets. He is a bit rough around the edges, one time having tried to make Blam murder you his catchphrase. Physically, Rocket is very similar to an Earth Raccoon with heightened senses and agility, but he is also an expert marksman, having used high-powered guns from all across the galaxy. He is also an excellent strategist and pilot. In the movie, Rocket Raccoon will be voiced by actor Bradley Cooper. I can definitely see Rocket becoming one of the favorites out of this movie. And when I went to go see the preview, I was just mesmerized by the animation of his fur and everything. It was just so good. And rounding out the team is the plant-like Groot. Groot is a flora colossus of royal descent from planet X. Despite their tree-like appearance, they are in fact sentient creatures. When Groot first appeared in comics, he was actually introduced as an alien who was sent to Earth in order to capture humans for experimentation. He was eventually brought back and recharacterized as a good guy. Aside from his appearance, the next noticeable thing about Groot is his speech. When he speaks, it's always a variation of inflection of the phrase, I am Groot. Only those with a higher level of understanding in the intricacies of his speech are able to understand what he's saying. His best friend Rocket Raccoon seems to be able to easily communicate with him. As a floor colossus, Groot has super strength, the ability to change in size. He is also shown to be able to control trees and other plants and to be fire resistant. Groot is oftentimes the muscle of the team, however, because of his privileged royal upbringing, is also incredibly intelligent. In the movie, Groot will be voiced by Fast and Furious actor Vin Diesel, who has the perfect voice for this. So these are the Guardians of the Galaxy. They're definitely a weird mix of a team to come together to protect the universe, but maybe they're just the heroes we need and not the ones we deserve. Based on the previews and trailers, there are a few more characters that I just want to quickly tell you about, just so you know who they are. First is the Nova Corps. They are pretty much space cops. Um, however, it seems as though John C. Riley and Glenn Close both have cameos of people who are affiliated with the Nova Corps, and it seems as though the Guardians are going to be dealing with them quite a bit. Next is Yondu, played by The Walking Dead's Michael Rooker. He is a blue alien with a red mohawk. Uh, he seems to be connected with how Peter ends up in space, though it's uncertain how big of a role he has throughout the entire movie. Then there's Ronan the Accuser, who is played by Hobbit and Pushing Daisy's actor Lee Pace. 
who is in fact the big bad of this movie. Ronin is a type of alien called Kree and is one of the most powerful of the Kree race. He has several different abilities, however he is shown wielding the dangerous cosmic weapon, the Universal Weapon. And lastly is Karen Gillan of Doctor Who fame will be playing Nebula, who is a space pirate and mercenary, who with her enhanced strength and fighting skills will certainly pose as a threat to the Guardians. So this has been your Guardians of the Galaxy movie one-shot. There is so much more to the comics, and I would love to go more in depth in another video sometime, but we'll see when that happens. If you're interested in reading the comics, I would recommend picking up the current run uh, that's ongoing right now. That's where I started. Uh, a lot of people also recommend the 2008 run of Guardians of the Galaxy, but I haven't read that, so I can't really say much about it, but I've heard it's really good. Please share and like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions or any suggestions for any future nerd related videos. Until then, you can always check out my last comics related video, which was a review of the X-Men Days of Future Past movie. Or you can even check out my vlogs where I mainly talk about my recent move to Alaska and just general life stuff. So until then, I am Jetpack. I will see you in line for Guardians of the Galaxy when it comes out August 1st. Thanks for watching!